Well, collectors, here we are. We're in uh, Pomona, California, uh, at the show out here. It's um, around May the 10th, something like that. Uh, the weather's a little cloudy. I was hoping for some nice sunny weather, but uh, well, we'll we'll get through it. And it, it's a nice little show here. The, there's maybe about 300, 350 tables, all military, uh, and some good stuff and some, well, you know how it is, but it's fun to root through. And uh, we just ran into a guy outside here, and uh, as luck would have it, he, he had a, uh, an NSDAP pole top, and it's a, it's a pretty nice piece. It's all aluminum. And it is, uh, it is RZM marked, there's the RZM there. And it looks like um, a veteran or somebody was, um, was playing around with it and um, he put a little bracket here so probably he could mount it on his desk or something. But uh, we can live with that. It's a pretty nice example in good shape. All the black paint is still in the swaths. And uh, so, hey, you know, you can't let something like this go by if it's available and it's uh, Place right, which it was. So we'll take you inside, and we can see what else is around here. Okay, we're uh, we're out front of the show hall here in Pomona, and uh, just having another cigar. And uh, a nice gentleman uh, asked if we could um, appraise a, a couple of daggers, and we're always happy to do that for people. And what's your name, sir? Alex Dupont. Alex Dupont. Yes, sir. That's a good name. You must be rich. DuPont is a famous name. Unfortunately, I'm not that rich. You're not that rich. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see what you, what we have here. Um, uh, this uh, this is a very nice um, SA dagger, and uh, uh, the scabbard is beautiful. It's very mm -hmm. rare to see this amount of anodizing with the lacquer still on it. Mm -hmm. And then to add to the uh, goodness of this nice piece, uh, there's an original brown vertical hanger and we don't see many brown vertical hangers they were usually worn by groups that um, uh, they rode horses or sometimes you'll see pictures of uh, band members you know the guys that played the drum they didn't want a dagger swinging in the way so they wore it from the vertical and, and back of them hmm. so that's probably where this may come from but let's see what the blade looks like oh boy it's really this is really a nice dagger See how great the um, the motto is with all the darkening in it. It's really beautiful. And then on the reverse, oh, even better. So here we have we have a partial uh, Rome inscription where just the signature of Rome was taken out, and the icon trademark was left untouched. And for once, whoever did this job back in 1934 really did a nice job. It's not. Sometimes you see them, they're so ground up and they make such a mess out of it. This one is beautifully done, probably professionally done. Yeah, it's a, it, the dagger has a, a grouper mark on it from FR, which would uh, come from the Nuremberg area. Uh, this, is a, this is an exceptional piece here, and uh, with the vertical and the, and the nice etch, um, this piece would sell between about 2000 and 2500 uh, It's very desirable, very good dagger. Okay. We were looking uh, further at this dagger and uh, you may have noticed that it, it doesn't have a hanging ring on it and that's something that um, more than likely the original owner of the dagger took the hanging ring off so that he could easily put the uh, vertical on. So we, uh, we slid the vertical down, and it's, and it's quite interesting on this dagger. When you, when you slide it down, there's a, uh, a set of initials that the hanger covers. It's also and, down here, too. And the, yeah, I see it scratched, it scratched down here also. JS and Beans, as this comes from Franconia, which was Nuremberg, uh, Julius Stryker was the gal lighter of Nuremberg, so you never know. It might have been his dagger. Who knows? Well, Alex reached into his bag and uh, he came up with uh, another very nice uh, item here. You're saying, oh, it's just a Hitler Youth knife and so forth, but um, this is this is really a nice one. Uh, notice that the um, 
The plating is still very good on it. It's one of the ones that has a pot metal base. And then what you usually see on the pot metal, the uh, leather rubbing across the surface wears it a little bit here, but this is, this is a normal thing. But the grip plates are nice. The uh, HJ insignia is very nice. And the original paint on the, on the scabbard is in terrific condition, as is the, uh, the hanger and the retainer loop. But then when we look at the blade, we have a, a very, very nice blade here. Uh, it's the type without a motto, so we know that this was made um, after 1938. Uh, but what's really interesting about it, if you look on the maker mark here, it's made by Zeitler from Wien, Vienna. Uh, it's very, very rare to see uh, Hitler Youth Knives uh, made by Zeitner, and uh, the same with SAs, they made some SAs. And then there's also their RZM number on the back of it, which is one you don't see much because you don't see Zeitner. And it, it was uh, RZM M7 slash 104. This is a very, very good piece. And there are people that um, collect Hitler Youth Knives. I know a collector that has over 200 of them. And I'll bet he doesn't have this one, Alex. Hmm. I'll bet he doesn't. This is really a good one. Alex got this in a auction online from Germany. I would say this is worth, um, because of the rare maker and the condition and all, um, every bit of a thousand dollars. So I hope you did good on that. Yes, you did. Yeah, that's great. into the show and uh, uh, there's it's a little dark in this hall but uh, I guess we call that a seller's light but uh, it's it's not too bad but uh, there's a, this is a kind of an interesting table here where uh, we have a number of um, German spiked uh, helmets pickle halba and just uh, most of you collectors probably know these things but the the face plate that's on these helmets where you see this particular eagle, uh, this is a typical Prussian faceplate. See, that's Prussian. This is Prussian. And then you see one that's a little different here where it has a couple of lions uh, aside from the one next to the crest. And this is Bavarian. So each state in Germany uh, back in the 1800s and the early 1900s had uh, a faceplate from the state where they came from. And there's more here. Um, this one, I'm not sure. That's a rare one. I think it's Hesse or someplace. Uh, and this one is also Prussian, but it's got a fancy um, add-on to the front of it that probably indicates that he was part of a, um, a special regiment. But of course, with uh, any other collectible, pickle halves are very popular. So you have to you have to know a little bit about what you're doing because they're only put together with nuts and bolts. So you can change things around. Uh, so you got to look out for all those things. But they're always interesting to see and very pretty. Now we're over here at kind of an interesting table. Belongs to an old friend of mine, but I can't say who because he's very shy. But anyhow, he's a school teacher, you know the type, he's retired now, so, but he's got some really uh, interesting things here. This is, um, of course, a, a Luftwaffe goblet, uh, and the patina on it is terrific. It's, it's all evenly, evenly toned throughout. Uh, it's named to a, um, uh, an NCO Oberscharfuhr which a lot of these Luftwaffe goblets were uh, because the, uh, the Germans really didn't want to give these guys knight's crosses, so they kind of uh, begged them off with, with these uh, goblets. And uh, it's also nice because it's, um, it's a silver one. Let me see, I'm not sure I got the hallmarks right there, but, but you see it has the silver um, hallmarks on it and it's marked uh, 825, I think. I can't say it. 
but a really a, a very, very nice example here. These are a great thing to have if you're collecting look block of things. And then another thing that's, that's really neat, a Graf Zeppelin toy, probably made in the 1930s, and it's, it's in terrific condition. A string would go on the front of it and a kid would, would pull it around. But it's a, it's a good size and, it, and it's got the original paint. And an item like this is, is worth, oh, four or five hundred dollars. It's very, very nice. And then another good thing here. There's a lot of good things on this table. Uh, this is a, um, uh, a porthole clock. Uh, and it's got the, uh, the German uh, Kriegsmarine Eagle and swastika on it, even though the hand's kind of covering it, but you can see that. And then it, it's, it has the number on it of 12408, and it's interesting that that same number uh, is also stamped on the rim. This is the first one that I remember seeing like this. Uh, it may have been that if somebody was working on several clocks, they wanted to make sure they had the right rim for the right clock. But uh, this is a, a very nice piece, and as you can see, it's, it's still running also. Great. Right. And we have a, a wonderful crystal glass here with the initials on it that I'm sure you'll recognize. Um, this must have been something probably out of uh, the Berghof, perhaps part of the, uh, uh, the dinner set there. It would be to have champagne in. So, some pretty cool things here. For you VW fans, this would be a helmet that was worn by um, people in the Volkswagen factory in the 1930s. That's in really nice condition. Got the VW symbol on both sides. The original liner is good. It's got a seal on it. Still got the chin strap. You know, for someone that collects VWs, this would be pretty neat to stick in the front seat. Not expensive either, it's only $400. Not bad. Cheap at half the price. Yeah, yeah we're still at this table, and uh, here's something that's very desirable. Uh, we all see lots of uh, binoculars all the time, uh, but it's very rare to see one that's actually Kriegsmarine proofed, and we know that it would come from Nordsee, that would be the uh, Kiel Harbor, and it's numbered. It's, it's really a, uh, an, and, and again, not expensive either, $450, and these are the real deal. Really, really nice. I'm pre-selling your stuff. <laughs> Anything you're talking about, you're taking home, aren't okay. you? Well, we're here uh, at the show on uh, Saturday morning now, and... Uh, Yesterday we got uh, got kind of lucky. I was walking around an aisle and uh, we ran into a fantastic Railway Eagle. It's the 27-inch uh, one. Still got lots of nice soot on it, and the Eagle was mounted on a really a nice wood background here by the vet that brought it back. And uh, these Railway Eagles, uh, they're they're getting very hard to find. We had about six of them last year, but this is the first one we've had this year, and uh, I'm sure it'll last about four seconds once we get back on the uh, once we get back on the internet with it. And one one thing about this this eagle, you know, uh, uh, people want to know what's what's on the back of it. Well, what was done here? They took a picture of the markings on the back of the eagle and then put put it on the back. You can see it's a PS example. I know. It's got all the uh, the markings with the what the uh, the eagles made out of and so forth. So it's a uh, it's pretty nice pretty nice piece ready to ready to hang up right on somebody's wall. Can't get any better than that.
is terrific. Well, we're looking uh, down the aisles here, and uh, uh, this uh, chilling bomb certainly couldn't help but catch our eye. Uh, it's SS. You see the SS eagle on the top, and then you have a, a runes button with the sunburst around it, and with the double eagles in the middle with the swastikas hanging from them, and then you have the black and white uh, SS. Um, whatever it is, yak hair or something, and then the bell with all the stuff, and you can see with all these hanging things why they call them jingling johnnies. Uh, for those of you that may not know, this was um, carried in the uh, front of, a, um, of an SS marching band. Uh, I understand that the man that owns this is asking uh, 42500 so it's not cheap, but uh, wow, what a, uh, what a piece. Beautiful. Certainly would make a great a highlight to a collection room as you walk in and have that baby standing there all lit up. Just perfect. Yeah, for those of you that um, are interested in, um, in bayonets, uh, this is a very nice display here. The, uh, the owner, the way he has these showcases made, it splits everything up so that you can actually see what you're looking at instead of just a big pile as we mostly see. But he's got a series of bayonets really all from all over the world. Uh, and it's a real bonanza for somebody that collects this stuff. You might be looking for a rare Czechoslovakian piece or something. And, uh, and this is the kind of table that you would uh, find it on. Very, very nice. Well, we're uh, outside here taking a little cigar break as usual and I thought I'd show you a couple of the things that we just picked up while we were walking out the front door. First of all, you know, you all you see a lot of flags and a lot of pennants, but this one is particularly nice because of the length of it. You ever see one that long, guys? Pretty cool. And then it's got a um, got a nice manufacturer tag on it and uh, it's just unusual for people that collect pennants and all this is a nice one to add to the collection so we thought we would pick it up then the, the same guy um, had a uh, terrific uh, funeral sash here these funeral sashes were um, were given uh, when somebody died uh, and he was well known to one of the famous infamous NSDAP gal lighters, they would have this sash over the coffin and this particular one was given by um, Burkell, a gal lighter and it's in great shape, all the, all the fringe is all here, no holes in it and on the one side is the uh, Burkell dedication and and then on the other side is a uh, the usual um, usual swastika thing and and more fringe and uh, these uh, sashes are made out of uh, like a lime silk very very pretty great shape so a couple of good things this is a good show to come to collectors you never know what you're going to find here.